how to use Google Meet step by step. Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how you can get started with Google Meet. Now we all know that meetings and online conferences are now a part of our daily lives. We all have a meeting to be at and Google Meet can help us in simplifying the scheduling and meeting process. Now, Google Meet is especially useful because you don't have to create a separate account for that. Everyone already is using Google. So to access Google Meet, you can either click on the top right dot on your browser and click on Meet over here or directly search for Google Meet on your browser. Once you search for Google Meet, on the left you have meetings and then you have calls. Now for Google Meet, you will see you have a couple of different options. Either you're joining a meeting or you're creating a meeting. And there is a slight difference between meetings and calls. Calls are a new form of Google Duo, which was the Google's method of calling within two accounts. So like we have Facebook calls, Facebook video calls, the call section was meant for that. Whereas the meeting section is an alternative to things like Microsoft 365's Teams. So the Microsoft Teams or the uh, Zoom meetings, that could be an alternative for this. Now with this, let's actually jump right into Google Meetings. To do that, just click on new meetings over here. And when you click on new meeting, you have three options. You can either create a meeting for later, which means you can schedule a meeting. Then you can create a instant meeting. So right away, your Google meeting would begin. Then you also have the option to schedule in the Google calendar. Now, if we go with option number three, which is to schedule in a Google calendar, this gives us a lot of detail. So what we can do is that we can do a meeting title. So annual water consumption meeting. And then after that, you can set up a time for that. So you can select a date like so. And you can also set up a duration. So how long is this meeting expected to run? So let's say it's meant to get started at, I'll just select any time, 6.30. And then let's say it's meant to be till 8.30, which is two hours. Now, another thing to note is that with this, you have certain designated times, but you can also alter the time to your own preference. So you have some selected times, but you can, you know, increase or decrease the meeting time. Then after that, you also can select your time zone. After that, you also have the option if it's not scheduled on a particular time, you can set it as an all day item. Then you also have a recurring meetings that you can set up, which means that if there is a meeting that is meant to happen every week or every two weeks, every three weeks, you can set that up as well. So you can set up daily meetings weekly on Thursday, monthly on the fourth Thursday, or even custom. So let's say I want to get a team brief after every 10 days. So I can set that up and by default, it will schedule a Google Meet for that particular duration of days. Now, after that, you also can put in your event details. So you have the option to join with Google Meet and you can see, you can click on settings over here. Once you click on settings, you can turn on host management where it allows you to restrict what participants can do in the meetings. This is especially useful when you have larger meetings and uh, seminars because you don't want everyone to be able to alter settings in the meeting. So let's say I don't want people to share the screen, send chat messages, or send, re I want them to send chat messages and not reactions. Then let's say I have to enable the option of the host joining before everyone else. Now, this is a tricky one because if the host is ever late, then the meeting won't begin and everyone would be waiting on the host. However, you can turn this off as well and the meeting by default will be created and started at this particular time that it is set to start. And once people start joining, even if the host joins later, it's not going to delay the meeting. And then you also have the meeting access type. So no one has to ask to join, everyone can dial in or people can join without asking if they are invited. Now we're gonna click on save. We can add locations, notifications, and then on the right, you can invite others. So once you do that, you can go on ahead and add different uh, guests so I can add different people over here and it will also give you a notification if the other person's google calendar is not available now you can click on save over here click on send and the invitation would be sent out and this meeting is going to be put in your google calendar 
Now, if we regularly start a meeting, so okay, we have a scheduled meeting, we can create a meeting for later as well, but what happens when the meeting actually starts? How do you take control of Google Meet and all of its features? So click on new meeting over here and click on start an instant meeting. Once you do that, Google will start your meeting and you guys can see this is what my meeting looks like. On the left, this will show you a instant link. So with this instant link, you can share this with anyone that is meant to join the meeting and they will be uh, joined into the meeting. Then if you want to send out direct email invites, you can just click on add others and you can go on ahead and add the other person and then send an email for them to join. Then on the bottom, you're going to see your mic as well as your camera. So you can click on allow and this will allow Google Meet to actually listen to you. And then you can click on allow to allow it to have access to your camera. Then you can also pin yourself to the screen or you can do this a couple of ways. You can either pin yourself for your screen only or you can pin yourself for everyone. So if you have a screen share, if you are trying to you know, communicate a point or if you want to pin the person that is speaking, you can do the pin for everyone and everyone would be able to see that person at the forefront. Now I'm going to turn this off, but you guys can also see that you have the option to remove tiles and minimize, and you also have the option to turn on effects. So I'm going to turn on my camera again to show you guys that you can actually turn on effects, including things like different backgrounds. You can also add blur, so you can slightly blur your background. You can also do a high definition blur as well as your own personal background. Google provides you with a bunch of different schemes of backgrounds, such as professional, nature-based, cottage, fantasy, and more. Then on the right, you also have filters you can add. If this is a fun meeting, you can you know have colored hair, have a mustache, whatever you want. You have characters that you can add as well. Then after that, you also have appearance. So when you go into appearance, you can choose to grayscale your video, make it look like a cloudy day, which just decreases brightness. And then you can also make it look like sunlight or moonlight. You can also adjust the video lighting. So it's going to make it easier for your viewers to focus on you, even against a brighter background. Now below that, you also have the options to turn on captions. And once you turn on captions, it auto generates captions for you. And you guys can see at the bottom over here, it's currently generating captions as I am speaking. Now, this is helpful, especially if you have a team that has any type of member that has any kind of disability. So it can be easier and it can be a whole lot easier to transcribe later on as well. Now, moving on, we also have the send a reaction option where people can send reactions as well as presentations. So people can choose to share their screen, share their window, or share a particular Chrome tab. Then they can also raise their hands from the bottom right and then click on these three dots where you can change layouts, open your meeting full screen, open picture in picture, as well as apply visual effects. Then on the right, you also have the option to show everyone so you can see all the people that are currently present in your meeting. Then you have the chat option, which allows you to view the chatting that is happening alongside. And then you also have different activities. So this allows you to create polls, recordings, as well as breakout rooms within meetings. And then on the right, you also have your host controls that can help you in moderating. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe.